Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, and I'll be your host for today's show. Today, we're going to talk about the board's role in talent management. And joining me is Chris O'Neill, who's a board member with Gap, Inc. So, Chris, welcome. Thanks, TK. Wonderful to be here. So this topic of talent, talent management, everybody always said that people are their most important asset. Yet my experience is that board meetings are so chock full and committee meeting agendas are so, so full that it's been hard to spend the amount of time that the sort of the topic deserves. So now all of a sudden we see investors sort of saying, hey, we're going to make this important because we want information. And so now boards are having to uh, pay more attention to talent management and employee data. So have you seen an uptick in demands from boards that either you serve on or you're familiar with? Absolutely. It's been very interesting, right? I, I think, I think the notion of the team you build is the company you build has been really a core part of my philosophy in, in all companies I've been a part of and boards I've served on. And it's been very interesting to see, like you said, an uptick in demand from all sides, actually, from management themselves, but certainly from the boards, asking questions about talent. You know, one of the silver linings from, from uh, these past difficult year or two has been really intentionality around talent, you know, realization that you know, people are burning out and we need to think about culture in a slightly different way as we evolve and adjust um, to the pandemic. So I've definitely seen it in the boardroom where we're asking questions and we're diving in to, to talent related numbers. Uh, we'll talk about diversity and inclusion, of course, in this conversation, which is, which is um, definitely part of that. But more generally, I see more attention being paid. I see more regularity with which numbers and talent, uh, everything from succession planning on down to just, just the status of talent. Uh, is more pervasive in the boardrooms, certainly that I'm in, uh, and also that I, when I talk to other fellow board members, it's it's a topic that really is is or at the top of the agenda for every board right now. Well, certainly I'm seeing a lot of it from my end, but there's there's and again, people define talent management in different ways. But a um, couple questions for you. So, how what committee? How should it? You know, how should it be addressed from the board level? Is it a comp committee issue? I see people changing their name of their comp committee to include, you know, t talent issues. Um, and then the follow up question to that is how far down the organization should uh, a board get involved when you're really talking about talent management? You know, in the past, again, my experience is mostly C suite level kind of positions, but um, I think in today's world, that's changing as well. So what's your experience with the board's role and then sort of where it should be located? Yeah, I think talent and culture clearly are, are I believe, are the most important things for, for a company and certainly for a board to, to oversee. Uh, yet it's also the most difficult for some of the reasons you're describing. Uh, I tactically uh, believe that it is probably most logical uh, to be housed in the compensation committee. Uh, Gapping the compensation committee is called Com compensation and leadership development. So it, it actually is a nod very explicitly towards talent management and leadership development. So so that's that's a from a tactical perspective. You know, if I if I step back out, uh, I have the saying that um, uh, I think serves serves us well. It says you know, having your nose in um, but your finger on the pulse. Right. So the notion of like fingers out, I, I believe that fingers on the pulse really comes from a lot of different areas from a board's perspective. So one of them is is really I call, I call field observations. And I'll touch on that because it's really a getting at this notion of really understanding and curating a perspective on the on the talent and the culture of the company can be can be made through some field observations. And then there's a lot of services and tools that you can use in addition to that, to curate external information, again, to form an opinion, to have your finger on the pulse of what's truly going on in a company. So let me unpack each of those just a little bit. Uh, in terms of field observation, I believe that seeing is believing. Right? So you, you can augment the fact base that's being served up to you by management 
and trust but verify through field observation. Under the belief that culture eats strategy for breakfast, uh, you can dip into the organization, get to know the management team. Um, and that can be on a very regular, lightweight basis. In my experience, the two players uh, that happen to know what's really going on in the company at one time are the CFO and, and the general counsel. So I try to make uh, time and space to get to know the, the GC and the CFO, and then periodically check in with them. Um, other areas where I think you get a flavor for, for culture, if you go to a sales kickoff meeting, uh, you tend to know what's really happening in a company. If you can interact with people who are actually on the front line, uh, that's a nice, that's a nice um, place to get the truth uh, or to get a flavor anyways of what's going on with the company or culture. Uh, in retail, of course, you can go, you know, go to the stores, uh, shop online, right? I'm a big fan of actually using using the, the products uh, and testing them out and, and letting people know what's really working well and where there might be areas to improve. Um, so using a product, signing up for new things, like these are the field observations that I think it's on the board to form independent of, of management. And then the second part, TK, is really about curating external information, right? So formulate your own perspectives and opinions. Uh, I think of this like in an investor's role, there's a lot of due diligence up front before you make an investment. But I think of this is almost like continuous diligence. So setting Google alerts, um, going on Reddit, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, community groups uh, that form in social, Glassdoor, uh, following thought leaders on Twitter. I mean, the list goes on. There's no shortage of external perspectives on the company and collectively you can form an opinion. And as I said, keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening with the talent and the culture in the industry and then specific to the company that you're on the board of. The board's awareness of when they make a decision, what the message along with that decision is being sent. Um, I call them watershed moments and the board probably has three or four of those during the year when they'll make a decision on a policy or procedure or you know, a, a, an incident that hurt that happened in the company where uh, people will, no matter what the board's saying, people will translate the impact of that decision into their culture. So it's important, you know, if somebody's dealing with a, you know, with a, somebody that's sort of cheating the system, you know, internally, or, you know, a certain situation, you know, where somebody hasn't represented the company well. There's a lot of things that employees are watching where the board is making a decision that will significantly impact the culture. And boards need to be aware of that, particularly now that they're dealing with so many new topics. Yeah, it, you know, that's it's a very, very important point. And it, it's, you know, values and culture aren't, aren't what happens you know, at the best of times, usually those are put to the test and are really only truly values if if they're if they're if they're held and, and and the company and the board walks the talk when you know when it really matters. So I agree with you, and and people are um, very acutely aware of those watershed moments, as you say. So let's talk about the nine hundred pound gorilla in the room, and that's the addressing the topic of diversity and inclusion. I mean, you know, obviously that's uh, center stage and uh, not only for the boards themselves, but investors, regulators, everybody, you know, this is certainly the topic du jour. So what should boards be doing to make sure that their companies uh, not only track this, but are making progress? And, and then ultimately, how do you sort of work that into the reward system for management? Because you know, if you think about all the things that are trying to be added for ESG and all that stuff, it really becomes very complex for the comp committee because uh, you want it to be significant enough to make a difference. But, you know, you're dividing up all these little pieces of things you want to measure. Yeah. Well, first, I'll say, say absolutely right. I mean, this, this, as I mentioned, this is at the top of the top of the list in terms of the things that, that boards are wrestling with and, 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 and good. Right. I, I do believe this is a this is one of the silver linings of, of the difficulties over the past year or two in that we're making meaningful progress. And I say meaningful progress, but I also am very clear eyed that we're so early in the journey towards where we need to be. But it's a good start. We're moving in the right direction. Um, if you look at statistics on placement of women and underrepresented minorities on boards, you, you can see some 
some green shoots or some or some some things to at least uh, applaud that we're heading in the right direction or indicate that we are. You know, to your to your point, boards like what gets measured gets done, and I do think there's there's probably um, uh, a little bit too much appetite to measure too much. And, and I'm a believer of measuring inputs and measuring very few things. But if I step back in terms of diversity inclusion, I don't view this as any different than anything else that's really important to a company in terms of what, how, what the approach ought to be. Uh, but, and that really starts with your philosophy. Like, what does it mean? Like, are you really, like, what, what are you committed to this? And then you, you back um, into definitions, right? In terms of the main, terms and the cultural language that you want to, you know, you really want to espouse as a philosophy. So what does it mean to be inclusive at your company? What does diversity mean? What is the belonging, parity, equity, all those things need to be precisely described and defined. Um, you don't need all of them, but at least pick, you know, one or two or three and commit to them. And then I call those like the pillars, right? If you think of the pillars of the work, um, and then underneath that, you organize the work uh, underneath them, the tactics, if you will. So recruiting or equal pay practices. Uh, from there, you can then put uh, measurements around the specific tactics. And then you, you treat it, as I said, setting goals and then measuring and having people accountable to those, to those specific things that you agree to. Um, again, I'm a believer in having fewer goals rather than, than a whole bunch. Um, and I'm also a believer that you actually should measure some inputs. So I do believe that representation is one of the bigger uh, leverage points of leverage in the company. So that would be an example of one thing that you could you could measure. So the percentage of leadership and leadership could be defined at whatever level makes sense in a company that is from underrepresented minorities or or if gender is is the uh, the bigger the bigger challenge for a specific company that would be included in there as well. So to step back, it's like set your philosophy, be very intentional in, in your definitions of what it means, have the pillars, have the tactics, measure them, have accountability for checking in on specific goals and treat it like an important uh, element of, of your company's success that it is. So Chris, I have always enjoyed your thoughtful reflection on topics. Um, I think you thank you, TJ. Think things TK, through. TK. <laughs> yeah, and I I really appreciate your participation with our next gen board leaders group. Uh, again, you definitely add some value to the process, and uh, it's been enjoyable to you know have these uh, couple years of uh, having the opportunity to work together. So. Thanks for taking the time to join me today. Likewise, TK. Thank you. I always appreciate your leadership and your perspectives as well. Thank you so much. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Mm -hmm.